Hi, and welcome to the Maysville Community Technical College's pre-admission conference for the practical nursing that's located on two different campuses. One is the Maysville main campus, the other is the Rowan campus in Moorhead, Kentucky, and we're so glad you're here. Please check with your campus for the program that you're interested in to see the exact start dates because they are off different semesters. So you'll want to check with your advisor for that. Again, welcome to the pre-admission conference for the practical nursing program. My name is Ginger Clark and I'm the Associate Dean of Health Sciences and the Nursing Program Administrator for Maysville Community and Technical College. I've included my phone number and extension along with my email address if you need me for any information or you just have a few questions to ask, please don't hesitate to call. At the end of this program, we'll give you some more contact information if needed. The topics that we're going to discuss on this presentation include the introduction, the application process to the Maysville Community Technical College's practical nursing program, the philosophy of the program, where to find the application packet, how to complete the packet, specific program requirements for the PN program, selective admission processes and how we choose who gets selected into the program, health screen screening requirements and criminal background checks, and also the deadline for application. So we start the program at different times on the different campuses. So you need to know when the program starts for the campus you want to attend. And you can talk to your advisor about that. You could call me um, and find out when we're going to be admitting on that campus. So if we're admitting for a spring program that starts in January, the last day to apply for that program is the last business day in October. If we're admitting for a program that starts in August, you the last day to apply is March 1st in the semester before that the classes start. And then we're also going to discuss the notification of acceptance into the practical nursing program. So on this slide, we talk about the application. And the first question you're going to ask is, where do I find the application? If you're watching this video, you have actually found the application on the website. You go to MCTC and go under the nursing department and scroll about halfway down. You'll click on pre-admission conference information for the practical nursing program. So you have the video and underneath that, it says download and return per instructions. Um, the packets for each ca campus that you're applying to. So there's an admission info packet and there's an admission signature packet. The admissions info packet is going to be the information that we go over in this pre-admission conference and the admission signature packet is the paperwork that you have to fill out and return to us for the application by the deadline. So what do I do to complete the application. I just told you you have to fill out that admission signature packet. What is considered a complete application that all the forms are filled in and completed on every page. It's um, the student's responsibility to ensure that the application is complete and on file by the deadline. Incomplete applications will not be considered. So that's something that's important. If you don't have your contact information, if you haven't put your um, SRNA form in there, then we will not consider that a complete application. So please make sure that you complete that. You mail the applications to the Rowan campus and I will give you the address on a further slide. Don't overnight or send any special mail um, because it, a lot of times it just goes to our loading dock and if no one's there, that if it requires a signature or anything like that, so it goes back to the mail uh, post office and then it gets sent back to you so you can miss the deadline for that. So the deadline for application, there's two deadlines. One is March 1st 
if you're applying for a program that starts in the fall or in August. The deadline again is March 1st. If you're applying for a program that starts in the spring, which will be January, you must complete that application and it must be to us by the last business day in October. Application to the MCTC nursing programs does not guarantee admission into the nursing program. We do have a selective admission process that we'll discuss further down in this presentation. Students will be notified via their KCTCS emails if you are accepted or denied admission into the program. We will not mail you a letter to let you know it will be sent via email. This is the philosophy of the MCTC Practical Nursing Program, so I'm just going to give you a few minutes to look this over. So this sheet is the practical nursing program's estimated program fees. So uh, the first is the resident per credit hour, how much it costs, and that price is $182 per credit hour. If you're considering the first semester of the practical nursing program, that is 12 hours, so you do the math, 182 times 12. Um, if you're a non-resident, it's $364 per credit hour. Um, the Build Smart fee is $8 per credit hour. You can see we've broken out the textbook fees per semester. And of course, again, this is an estimate. You have a nurse kit, which is one-time um, fee. The ATI Access Swift, Swift River per semester, but please note that we could have to add some additional charges as necessary. And then your exam soft, which is the way we test for all of your exams is on the computer. So there you can see the semester fee for that. And then we go into the uniforms. So your uniforms you do purchase at the bookstore, so please don't purchase them somewhere else. We purchase them at the bookstore because we get the school logo on the uniform. So that runs around $150 for labs and shoes. Um, your nursing cap for graduation and pinning is about $25. And then you can see we have required um, Requirements for clinical rotations. One is Castle Branch, which is a records repository where you do a background check, drug screen, and they're, they keep all your immunization and blood work records. They are a compliance tracker. So the fee is about $117 for Castle Branch itself, including the background checks and drug screens. So please don't get the background check and drug screen somewhere else. You have to do it through Castle Branch. So if you get it through someone where else, you will have to pay extra to get it through Castle Branch. Um, and then you can see immunization and blood work fees, liability insurance per semester, which you will pay with your college tuition. So you don't have to worry about having a separate fee for that. A stethoscope. Um, we put an average cost of about $25. Please remember that you do get what you pay for. Um, my stethoscope, I don't think you need to pay $200 for one. My stethoscope I use cost about $35. Um, I did work somewhere that purchased stethoscopes and they were about $4 a piece. And I thought I was losing my hearing because I couldn't hear breast sounds, lung sounds, anything. Um, and it was just because the stethoscope was not of quality. So again, you get what you pay for. You have to have a watch with a second hand, blood pressure cuff, and scissors. 
And then you have your graduation expenses that you can see there. To take the NCLEX is about $350. Your cap, gown, and tassels, graduation pictures, and nursing pin. And then at the bottom are some clinical sites that we use that subject to change, but those are the ones most commonly used. So on this slide, we're going to talk about the required documentation for being in the program, some things that the college requires, some things that the clinical facility requires. So the things that the, our college requirement is that you have to be on the nurse aid abuse registry. So it's your, we need a copy put into your application of your SRNA, which should be on the KBN website. And that's to say that you've registered with them and you do um, not have any thing on your record for uh, abuse. The next is a CPR certification or recertification. We will not accept if you take CPR online. It is required that you go in and actually check off in front of a human and do your chest compressions and it has to be on an infant, a child, an adult, an AED. So those are the four things. A lot of times it might be called a healthcare um, provider CPR certification, but again, you need infant, child, adult, and AED. So if you do it and you do your compressions that are online, all of that stuff, we do not accept that. Usually the American Red Cross, or I'm sorry, American Heart is the certification we accept most frequently. We also require professional and liability insurance proof. That is something that you pay for with your tuition. It's $11 a month, but by paying your tuition, you are paying for that professional liability if you see that on your bill. Clinical facility requirements. We have to have drug screens and criminal background checks. Do not go and do those on your own. Pay for them on your own because you will have to repeat it. We use a record repository company called Castle Branch and they have special places that you go to for drug screens and your criminal background check. So you will, if you are accepted into the program, the faculty will work with you on orientation to get you signed up for Castle Branch and get you signed up to take the drug screen and the background check. The cost is approximately $117 to get on this and do these background checks. You also need to find your rubella titer, um, your varicella immunization record or titer, mumps immunization record or titer, your hepatitis B surface antigen. It's a series of three vaccinations or you can do an acute hepatitis panel to prove that you do have some immunity to hepatitis B. A respirator fit test, usually you do that at the facility that you go to, um, so don't do that ahead of time. But if you have been fit, fit tested somewhere, then you should bring that copy in to load up to Castle Branch. Um, a TB skin test, which is a PPD or a chest x-ray, you usually have to have that. Um, every year and the faculty again will talk to you about that. And then the COVID vaccination record. We as a college do not require that you have the COVID vaccination, but we follow the guidelines of the facilities that we use for clinicals um, and whatever guidelines they have for their employees, that's what our students have to do. I cannot guarantee that you can go to a clinical facility if they require COVID vaccinations um, and they don't accept exemptions or they don't accept your exemption. So that's something just to consider. Again, we don't require it, but the facilities usually do. And it could keep you from continuing with a program if you don't have an exemption that they accept. So I just want you to be aware of that ahead of time. 
so that you can ask questions and um, think about that a little bit. So this form that's in your packet is some unique requirements for the practical nursing program. So you can see that acceptance into the practical nursing is program is based on a selective admission process. Requirements that are required are application for admission that are received by the deadline. Your official transcripts from any college or university needs to be in transferred to um, MCTC, your official high school transcript, um, any recent ACT scores, your T-score has to be in by the deadline, your um, attendance in the pre-admission conference, which you're doing now, uh, you must be on the Kentucky Nurse Aid Registry and have that current Red Cross or American Heart um, CPR card, and we do not take online certification for CPR, so you have to do a face-to-face -face program. So then it talks about the curriculum requirements and um, some prereqs to get in. And then, you know, there's different things you can choose. You can work with your advisor and choose whether you do um, just a diploma for the practical nursing or if you get a GOTS degree or an associate degree, then um, those are things you can work out with your advisor on that. So as we've discussed on previous slides, we do have a selective admission process for being accepted into the practical nursing program. And basically what that means is we have a committee so that not one person will decide whether to accept an applicant or not. It's an entire committee, so we won't be biased on any applicants. Um, that committee looks at your application. They look at your selective admission assessment form, which is the form that we have on this slide, looking at your total points um, and consider the group and the amount, the size of the group that we are can, can, can accept to be admitted into the program um, for each campus. And basically, we break this up into sections or areas and we total up the points on each area and drop it down to the bottom. So if you look for your previous college experience, you get points for completing the classes. If you're in a class currently, you will not get points for being in the class because you haven't completed it yet. So um, you can see that with the nurse aid um, that you've taken the class, but you've also submitted your nurse aid registry form from the Kentucky Board of Nursing in with your packet. We look at your biology grades, your overall um, GPA score, your testing score on your TEAS examination. We look at the overall score, but we also look at the scores as they're broken up into reading, science, and math. But for your over sco overall score, it is required that you get a 41.3 or higher on the TEAS exam to be considered for application. So if you score below a 41.3, you are allowed to take it one time again during the admission process or the admission cycle. So you can take that up to the day of the last day to apply for the program. If you take it after that, you won't be considered. Um, and the minimum GPA that we accept is a 2.0. If you have a GPA below that, we cannot accept you. That's our policy on the application um, for who we can look at and consider for application. So this slide just basically talks about our APITs examination that is required for the application process. Um, it's a test of essential academic skills. That's what the T stands for. And it's part of a national exam for health sciences and designated specifically to assess the student's academic preparedness. And the test is multiple choice and the skills assessed are mathematics, reading, science, and English and language usage. 
So basically, it's a lot like what you would think of as the ACT, but it is for health sciences. And um, we do look to make sure that you are, we look at that test scores for that to make sure that you are prepared for um, coming into the program. If you want to study for it, I would recommend that you go to the website that's listed here, the atitesting.com slash events. And there's free rep webinars. There's some online um, studying that you could purchase if you want. The library has some things you can study if you would like to do that. Um, if you don't test well, you can retest one time during the admission cycle. And um, you have to have that completed before the admission deadline, which is March 1st. So the, if you go to the MCTC website, this is all listed there also. And um, I would make sure that you call Jerry Morrison, who is in our testing center, and he can set up your times to test. So the next form included in your packet is a statement of understanding. This form will have to be returned to with your admission packet to the college. And it says, as a student of this program, I agree to the rules, regulations, policies, and procedures as stated below. The program requires a period of assigned guided clinical experiences, either at the college or at other appropriate facility in the community. For educational purposes and practice on live models, I will allow other students to practice procedures on me, and I will practice procedures on them under the guidance and direct supervision of my instructor. The nature and educational objectives of these procedures have been fully explained to me. No guarantee or assurances have been given to me by, my, by any representative of the college as to any problem that might be incurred as a result of these procedures. So usually you have lab partners that you practice head-to-toe assessments on. You practice listening to heart sounds, lung sounds, bowel sounds, different things like that. So um, you you that it gives you a much better way to practice than listening on a mannequin. Um, these clinical experiences are assigned by the instructor for their educational value and thus no payments or wages will be earned or expected. It is understood I will be a student within the clinical facilities that affiliate with my college and will conduct myself accordingly. I will follow all required and published personnel policies, standards, philosophy, and procedures of these agencies. I will agree at my own expense to obtain all health screenings, immunizations, criminal background checks, and drug screenings as required by the affiliating agency. I have been provided a copy of and read and agree to adhere to the college policies, rules, and regulations related to the program for which I'm applying. I understand that information regarding patient or former patients is confidential and may be used only for clinical purposes within an educational setting according to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996 or HIPAA. I understand that the educational experiences and knowledge gained during the program do not entitle me to a job. However, if all educational objectives and licensure requirements are successfully obtained, I will be qualified for a job in this occupation. I understand that any action on my part inconsistent with the above understandings may result in suspension of training. I understand that I am liable for my own medical and hospital expenses, and I understand that I am accountable for my own actions. Therefore, I will carry the minimum um, liability insurance, which again is in your tuition cost each semester, um, the facility. So you say I read, I have read and understand each term above and agree to abide by this statement of understanding and you sign it and date it and you will return that with your admission packet. Now to go into a little more depth of some of these, I will say number four, it says that you understand that you're a student within the clinical facilities that affiliate with the college. If you look on the previous sheet that gave you some of the examples of places we go, if a facility refuses you admittance into their clinical setting for some reason, if you were fired from that facility, 
we will try to find another facility, but if we don't go to another facility, then that may exclude you from the program. When you talk about adhering to um, the college's policies, rules, and regulations, we give you a student handbook at the beginning of the nursing program, and that is your Bible basically for the program. It tells you about uniforms, what you have to be, um, what you have to wear to clinical facilities, about professionalism, and we are very strong on you following those rules. If for some reason you come to a clinical setting and you are out of uniform for some reason, you wore purple shoes, um, you wore your hair, you know, you have 15 earrings in and your tongue is pierced. If you have not taken those things out for the clinical setting, you can be sent home and given an unsatisfactory for that. We're very strict on the rules. I'm the first person that a facility will usually contact to say, why is your student out of uniform? Why is, if you have tattoos, they have to be covered? Why is your student having tattoos if our facility says you can't do that? Um, that our own staff can't do that, then why should your students be able to do that? And they know who our students are, those facilities. You guys are all in the same colors. And if I get that call and I have to call the clinical instructor and say who's out of uniform, who's wearing jewelry, who's wearing a tongue ring, etc., cetera, um, you will be sent home and you will be given an unsatisfactory. If you get three unsatisfactories, again, you are out of the program. So you, we follow those rules not just because we like to write rules. Those came from the facilities. We have long-standing relationships with the facilities we go to. And it's not fair for students to be out of the conformed uniform that their staff have to be in. So yes, our, our restrictions are strict. We expect you to follow them. I don't care what you do when you're working on your own time, but when you're in a facility and you're representing the college and you're representing um, the nursing program, we expect you to adhere to all uniform requirements. We expect you to act professionally at all times, um, have your badge on at all times if you're representing um, the college. And so those are things that you want to definitely be aware of and know that we are very strict on that. HIPAA is another thing that we are very concerned about. Um, breaking HIPAA is can result in a huge fine for students, up to $250,000 of your money. It wouldn't be covered under the liability insurance. So we are all live in small towns. MCTC is basically every campus is in a small rural area and everybody knows everybody. So if we take this very seriously and you do not want to talk about a patient that you are caring for at any time anywhere outside of the setting of the hospital to your instructor or to the nurse caring for them. You don't even want to discuss it between each other. You don't want to discuss it at the lunch table, what you did to Mr. So-and-so in room 239A because their family may be sitting there and know exactly who you're talking about. Um, and the hospital can find out that you broke HIPAA and they can call us and you they, you they can refuse to allow you back into the facility, which basically means that you would be out of the program. So we take HIPAA very seriously and you don't want to put anything on social media. You don't want to put anything out there that would in any way jeopardize your admission into the program or the possibility of being fined federally for breaking HIPAA confidence. The next form in your packet is technical standards. So it says nursing at the technical level involves the provisions of direct care for individuals and is characterized by the application of verified knowledge in the skillful performance of nursing functions. Therefore, in order to be retained in the program, all applicants should possess one, sufficient visual acuity such as needed in the preparation and administration of medications and for the observation necessary for pa patient assessment and nursing care. So that means that you have to be able to see adequately to draw up medications in a syringe that you can read that syringe in those tiny numbers. 
um, or it can be corrected with glasses. Um, two, sufficient auditory perception to receive verbal communication from patients and members of the healthcare team and to assess health needs in people through the use of monitoring devices such as cardiac monitors, stethoscopes, IV infusion pumps, DOP tones, fire alarms, etc. Three, sufficient gross and fine motor coordination to respond promptly and to implement the skills, including the manipulation of equipment required in meeting health needs. So you have to be able to support a patient, lift, carry a patient if they fall, um, help lift a patient, um, and also have fine motor coordination, again, to draw up syringes, different things like that. Four, sufficient communication skills, speech, reading, writing, to interact with individuals and to communicate their needs properly promptly and effectively as may be necessary in the individual's interests, sufficient intellectual and emotional functions to plan and implement care for individuals. So this form again needs to be signed and returned to the main campus with your admission packets. And it has, if you need any special accommodations that you contact myself or Lori Gantz um, at the registrar's or admissions um, department. So this form in your packet is your student data form. So the information that we need on there is your name, a good address. If for some reason during the process your address changes or any of the information changes, please reach out to one of our division assistants so that we can update your information. So we need a good cell phone and a good home phone for you if you have one, um, your county of residence, your date of birth, etc. A big thing that we need is student race and ethnicity for the KBN benchmark reporting that we have to do for our um, accepted students. We also needed a good emergency contact for you and then at the bottom, just check the appropriate response if you're a new student, a readmission student, etc. And you want to make sure that you have a good email contact for us because we will be notifying you of your acceptance or denial by email, not in the mail, but by email. So please have a good contact for us and make sure it's a good email address. The next form that we're going to talk about is the KBN or Kentucky Board of Nursing Crime Conviction Procedure Acknowledgement. And before we get to this form, I want to make sure that you see that you need to read the KBN Criminal Conviction Brochure in the admission packet. This is a form that answers a lot of questions the brochure does. It also has the Kentucky Board of Nursing phone number that you can contact them if you have any questions about your criminal background or your criminal background check. The Kentucky Board of Nursing has the right to deny you the ability to sit for the national testing or the NCLEX because of things that might be on your criminal background check. Um, so I can't answer those questions. The Kentucky Board of Nursing can answer those questions for you. Um, Kentucky Board of Nursing does have mandatory reporting of all criminal convictions. So even when I renew my license every year, I have to check that I haven't had any um, misdemeanors or um, other crimes on my background. If I fail to do that, they could either fine me or suspend my nursing license if I lie and think, oh, they won't find out. And the criminal background checks for students before sitting for the NCLEX actually go through the FBI. So you want to be honest. I've heard of students who have lied, been allowed to test, but the, as soon as they passed, they got their um, licensure, but they also got a huge fine from the Kentucky Board of Nursing. So it's not something that you want to mess around with when you are Looking at that, again, I can't answer those questions. You need to call the Kentucky Board of Nursing. But this KBN Conviction Procedure Acknowledgement 
says the KBN requires that all prospective nursing students and or enrolled nursing students be aware, be aware of the established procedures an individual must complete if he or she has been convicted of a crime. This includes felony and misdemeanors, except traffic violations. The following must be completed. An individual may write a letter to the executive director of the Board of Nursing requesting a hearing and explaining the circumstances of a crime. B, request that official copies of the charges, conviction, and penalty be sent to the executive director of the Board of Nursing and submit additional information as requested. Number two, a hearing will be scheduled if the charges were of such nature, nature as to be related to the occupation of nursing or B, if the penalty imposed has been fulfilled, a hearing will not be scheduled for an individual on parole or probation. Three, the Board of Nursing will consider A, the nature of the offense and its relationship to the occupation of nursing, B, the activities of the individual since the crime was committed, and four, the Board of Nursing will give reasonable assurance that A, the individual will not be permitted to take the state board test pool examination, if he or she completes a nursing program or b the individual will not be permitted to take this will be permitted to take the state board test pool examination if there are no further problems and the nursing program is successfully completed so we need you to sign this paper and date it and return it with your emission packet this form is our policy for readmission so if you are considering trying to come back in because you were unsuccessful in one of our programs, you can look at this form and it's in your admission packet. And the big things that you have to do are submit a letter to myself to say why you want to be considered for readmitting into the program. You also have to get a faculty member to recommend that you be in the program, but you can read this in your packet and get further information. So this form is to be included in your admission packet and it's to say that you verify that you have attended a pre-admission conference. So you need to write the date of viewing, your email address, and that you understand all the topics that are explained in this um, pre-admission video. I do see that there is a typo and it says associate degree nursing program, it should say practical degree nursing program so um, on the one that's on the slide but it'll be corrected in the forms on the website but please make sure you put the verification code which is mctcpn conference and sign it and put the day's date thank you so this form is just a campus selection form if we have to if both PM programs are starting at the same time, which that again, you need to check with your advisor to see when the start dates are. They will probably be off um, by semester. So it, this may not be applicable to your program, but it's in there just in case they do start the same semester. So to wrap up our pre-admission conference, I want to remind everybody to schedule a TEAS examination with the testing center at any MCTC campus. You can call the campus and talk to the testing center there to make your appointment. Make sure you fill out the paperwork in the admission packet. The admission packet paperwork is the signatures that need to be turned in. It's marked with blue writing at the top of the page. Please return that to the MCTC Rowan campus and do not send it via overnight shipping, um, needing a signature or in any special way. It may not get delivered and will be returned to you. The address to use for the application is MCTC Attention PN Nursing Program, 400 Rocky Atkins at Tech Drive, Moorhead, Kentucky. 40351. If you have questions, please reach out to myself, our division assistants, or any of the nursing faculty as we're here to make this as smooth a process as possible. And again, congratulations for completing this part of 
the application and starting your journey to becoming a nurse. My contact information is there along with our division assistants at both Amazeville and Rowan campus, Miss Kathy Nelson and Miss Kathy Cassie Chandler and their contact information as well. Thank you.